Hi, this is Terence Wu with Hawkridge Systems. In this video, we're going to discuss drop tests and impact tests and the differences between them. In the world of simulation, a drop test is a very specific type of test where we take an object and drop it on a hard, flat surface. The drop test study is available in the SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional package and allows us to easily define a drop test simulation with very minimal effort. When we create a new study and select drop test from the specialized simulation category, we get this setup icon. From here, we can specify the drop height or velocity at impact, the direction of gravity, and the magnitude of gravity in case you're on the moon or something. We have some options for the ground or target, including whether it's perpendicular to gravity or at an angle whether it's rigid or flexible, and we can include friction and damping. It's really simple to set up, and if you'd like more detail on this spark plug example, check out the link to our previous video in the description below. Now, it's of course great that it's so quick and easy to set up a drop test, but this simplicity does come with the downside of limiting what we can do. The target has to be a flat surface, the model we're analyzing has to be the moving object, so if we wanted to hit our design with a hammer or a specialized impactor like many standards call for, that is impossible. And since a drop test assumes the object is freely falling, we don't have any options to add restraints to the model. So while a drop test study is great for quickly evaluating our designs in a drop, it's important to understand that there are lots of other impact tests we might want to do that don't fit within these limitations. In order to model a wider range of impact tests, a more general nonlinear dynamic setup is needed. We can create explicit dynamic simulations with a lot more flexibility using Simulia Structural Mechanics Engineer. For example, this simulation involves a scooter running into a curb. The target can be any shape that we model, so we could also look at what happens when we hit a speed bump or a fire hydrant or even another scooter coming in the other direction. We're able to inflate the tires, give the scooter an initial velocity, set the wheels to be rotating at the appropriate speed, and account for the rider's mass. We can clearly see that this is a more general approach, and the ability to set up all of these simulation details manually means that a lot more is possible. But consequently, it does take more work. If we are looking to analyze a simple drop test, we're going to be able to set that up far more quickly in SOLIDWORKS simulation. But if we want to analyze something that doesn't fit the strict limitations of a drop test, then we can crank up the complexity and the sky is the limit. I hope you found this quick overview helpful and that it has helped clarify the difference between a drop test simulation and an impact test simulation. Thanks for watching.